Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, today is uh, 31st of July, uh, 2021. I am now in Singapore. And uh, today I'm going to talk about um, Story Gardens. And the reason why I'm talking about Story Gardens today is because um, I did a video some time back and I think I want to share a bit with you uh, what has changed about Story Gardens uh, since then. So it's episode 10. I hope you enjoyed. So let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Ryan Koo and I am the founder of Alpha Marketing and also the Facebook group uh, Malaysian Investors in Singapore. I'm also the general manager for ERA uh, Malaysia in Johor. Right, and uh, let me share a bit of video about myself. Director of Alpha Marketing at Ryan Students and Foundation. So, my name is Ryan. I was at Ryan's Foundation. 6,000 uh, incoming supply in Johor. This is good. Thank you all. I am joining the uh, thank you for attending today's presentation on the Scandal Foundation. So um, I'm a Malaysian, I'm a Singapore PR, and uh, thank you for watching that short video about myself. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, uh, I'm a serial property investor. I've been investing in real estate since uh, 2007 uh, in Malaysia, in Singapore. Uh, and uh, But of course, in the past few years, I spent a lot of time in Iskandar, Malaysia, and you have seen me done a lot of uh, speaking engagements, uh, talks for banks, universities, uh, various uh, property developers, companies about Iskandar Malaysia, not only from a real estate perspective, but also about uh, doing business, right? I wrote many articles for uh, The Age of Singapore. And uh, yeah, I have a pretty long, varied property investment experience, right? Uh, doing uh, what you call that uh, property investments, not only for myself, but uh, transactions also for other people. Uh, I'm an agent with ERA Singapore and ERA Malaysia, right? Uh, I've run several businesses uh, in Johor. Uh, with regards to uh, real estate related businesses. Uh, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> I wrote two books on Iskandar Malaysia, uh, both sold very well. Uh, of course, today, uh, some people look back at Iskandar Malaysia and uh, they think Iskandar Malaysia is a failed uh, investment, right? And I think I understand where a lot of the anger comes from because a lot of people bought Iskandar Malaysia at the peak in 2012, 2013. And uh, till today, which is uh, almost eight, nine years later, I think a lot of prices have gone down a lot and have not recovered. Uh, I have also lost money uh, in Standard Malaysia. Uh, but of course, um, I made a lot of money also in Malaysian property. And I know Malaysia right now is in a bad place, right? With uh, COVID, with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, very bad politics uh, going on in Malaysia right now. Uh, but uh, I did make my money in uh, Malaysian property when I first started in 20, 2007. I bought a lot of studio apartments, one bidders in KL and uh, made a lot of money there. And uh, of course, Iskandar Malaysia also in recent years uh, didn't do very well. I mean, to be honest, I, I'll be very honest, uh, some of my, my own investment choices uh, did not pan out as well as I thought. Uh, again, a lot of it had to do with timing and uh, bad politics in Malaysia. But I, I had uh, some good investments as well. Of course, uh, like my one, the favorite I like to talk about is this uh, Strata office in uh, Putri Harbor. Uh, we still have very good rental yield. It's ten still tenanted today, right? And uh, our prices have held very well. And uh, of course, not everything in Skandar, Malaysia is bad. And uh, uh, it all depends on what you bought and when you bought, right? So, but never mind. That's a story for a different day. So, uh. Singapore as well, right? And, and you may notice I'm now in Singapore. I, I, I've also bought property in Singapore. Uh, Singapore property, one thing good is that over the years, uh, Singapore prices have crept up, even though they, they have, may not have made big gains like 10, 20 years ago in Singapore. But at least Singapore prices have helped very well. But never mind. I mean, today we're not talking about Singapore. If you'd like to watch my Singapore videos, you can watch those earlier videos on my YouTube channel, right? I do talk about Singapore a lot as well. Singapore has also been a uh, great place to buy real estate. Right. But today we're going to talk about Skanda. And um, okay, so let's recap a bit. So I did a video on landed property last year in September. And that is about what, uh, roughly 10 months ago. So, and at the time I was talking about a property called uh, Story Gardens, right? And the reason why I say landed property and uh, Story Gardens in particular uh, was a good buy, right? And at the time, um, Story Gardens uh, saw a significant price drop right and it became a very good deal right and i was sharing that deal at the time 
And during the 10 months from September till now, we have seen a lot of great sales. I think as a developer, they have sold probably close to 100, 100 plus units in, in that time frame. And for, for a property, which is actually not cheap, right? This is considered luxury high end, right? And, and, and the reason why I want to do this video today is because uh, there is still a perception that many properties in Skandar are not selling well, right? And that is true for probably some categories like the high rise, luxury high rise condominiums. Right, uh, those are still not selling well for some reasons, which I covered in earlier videos. Right, but uh, a lot of landed property are doing well, and if, if you are a landed property in Johor, you are probably able to sell transact. Even if you sell the loss, you probably escape. You can still escape with the majority of the investment intact. Right, in fact, most landed property owners shouldn't have sold at the loss. Right, they should have at least break even, uh, or, or and or made some money. Right, and that's and that's quite possible. And for the reasons we shall cover here in this video. So Astoria Gardens in Putra Harbour was something I spoke about last year, right? And uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, people equate Iskana Malaysia's or Malaysia's overall uh, bad situation now that there's zero uh, transactions. But of course, it's not zero transactions, right? And many Singaporeans, when I speak to about this, seem very surprised that people are still buying houses in Johor. But yeah, of course, there are, there are locals in Johor who can now afford property prices because property prices have dropped. And there are many opportunistic buyers, right? And uh, there's always that old saying, right? You buy when there is blood on the streets, right? And Malaysia is like, we are almost in a scenario now where there's blood on the streets, right? People are dying from COVID every day. Uh, the government may topple anytime now. <laughs> and that will, will trigger a new, probably a new government, maybe new elections, we don't know, right? There's a lot of uh, politicking going on right now between the major parties, right? And as it's as equivalent to what we call blood in the streets, and and prices are very good right now, and uh, a lot of uh, savvy buyers are taking opportunity to pick up good deals. So Astoria Gardens is uh, one example of that, and uh, this slide is a sales chart as of uh, September last year, right? And I'm sharing with you now to let you see, right? And if you if you look at September last year, uh, actually as a project, the developer only roughly sold maybe half, right? Roughly half. I mean, to be it's probably a bit less than half. Right, uh, all those red dots uh, represent the sold units, right? And all those blank ones basically are unsold units. So you can see that uh, during this point last year, this project was only roughly maybe 50% sold, right? 50% sold. And you can see majority of it are in this bottom uh, bottom right corner, which were the cheaper A1, type A1, A2 units, right? And they sold most of these, right? And some of the type C over here. And not many of the type Bs. A few type Bs, that's it, right? But type Bs were generally unsold. A lot of type C still available, right? And this was September last year, right? And um, uh, we, ERA Johor, we, we decided to take up and, and try and sell uh, the, unit, the, the, the units here, right? Uh, in Story Gardens. And if you look at it today, and this is a chart as of yesterday, right? This is 30th July, uh, 10 months later. Uh, they have color coded the system a little bit differently now. So now the green units are the available units and the yellow units are the blue units. But you can see a major difference in the sales chart. Now you will see that all the type C are almost fully sold, right? There's only one, two, three, four units left. And even these four units, uh, although they are not sold, sold, uh, sold as a size SMP, but they have very firm buyers behind it. In fact, we try not to talk about type C anymore because uh, you queue up, but behind it because and it may not be easy to get the unit. And you can see a lot of Type B units have been sold. Right, right now, I I I flip back again uh, so you can compare the difference. Uh. this is September last year. This is currently ten months later, right? And generally, we can say 100, 100 plus units have been sold. I I haven't really gone and calculated myself, but uh, for a project which is generally a uh, houses about a million a million ringgit ish, right? Uh, that's quite a lot of units sold. And generally, and you say, right, who are the people buying? Yeah, local buyers, right? I say no foreigners right now, right? Because uh, borders are closed. Uh, foreigners definitely not buying because uh, borders are closed and most foreigners will find it very difficult to buy if they can't see the actual house. So generally, we have been selling to locals. So you say, well, right, are the locals uh, so rich to be able to buy? Uh, do they have the confidence to buy? Yeah, I said, you'll be surprised that these locals have money and they're just waiting for the right product at the right price. Actually, this product is a great product. I mean, as a, as a, as a product, Astoria Gardens has not changed, right? But of course, prices have fallen, right? Uh, I mentioned in my videos before, uh, some 30%, maybe 40% in some cases, uh, actual prices drop. And this makes it very attractive to local buyers to enter. 
And uh, in fact, the, the in fact we, we had some foreigner buyers, but those are foreigners who are staying in JB. So even the foreigners staying in JB realize the value, right? And uh, they have gone in. So it, you can see, right? Uh, again, I show you the chart again. Uh, September last year, right? Quite a lot of emptiness. In fact, a lot of type C available here, right? And then now you look at uh, July this year, a hundred over plus. Years. So for a fairly high end, uh, landed property. So, and people tell me, oh, uh, so are they, are they, and you'll be quite surprised actually that if you want to buy a unit in Astoria Gardens now and you want to pick a good unit, right? when I say good unit means uh, you want south facing, you don't want west sun, you want a good house number, uh, you want to avoid having a lamppost in front of a house, actually it's quite difficult right now. You know? um, it's probably not very clear from your sales chart because this is just a flat 2D image, right? but if you actually go and visit the sites, uh, and you try to avoid things like number four and all the all those things where sun emission is not that easy. You know? Like for example, I show you all these corner lots here, right? In theory, actually technically speaking, they are all west sun, right? Right, because you notice this is west, right? so they all have west sun. So actually, these corners we have had trouble trying to sell them uh, for the longest time because they are all west sun. But actually, we have recently sold two, right? We have recently sold two, right? Uh, actually, they're all booked right now, right? So eventually, it, it took us some time, but they're all booked right now. Right, because it's uh, not easy to get good corner units, but these corner units, even though they're not perfect, uh, but they are, uh, you mentioned your bookings on them. Like this one actually is a house number four, right? Uh, this one, the buyers had the loan rejection many times, but actually now we have a pretty strong buyer on this one. This one also buyer loan rejected, actually it's considered sold already, but uh, buyer uh, forfeited, and so we have replaced with a new buyer now. Uh, and you can see a lot of type Bs now are sold now. Right, so as I mentioned, uh, and some of these units here, the reason why they're not sold is because they are corner, they're too near the road and, and things like that, and the back of here is a bit of a main road. So actually, it's, it's not easy, as I mentioned, to get a good <laughs> unit right now. Even though you say that, uh, hey, right, there's still some available units on this chart, right? Yeah, but they are not the best, best units, right? I mean, the best, best units have been sold earlier. Uh, and so if you're buying for homestay, where you tend to be more particular, Right, it's not easy to find the best best unit now, but it still it still doesn't it still means that it still doesn't mean that a story is not a good buy now. It still is a good buy. Uh, there's a reason why I'm doing this video because I'm trying to create a bit of urgency for people who have not bought yet because uh, a lot of people now adopt a wait and see attitude because Malaysia, as I, as I mentioned, uh, is perceived very badly now, and I understand why. I mean, it is of course with when you see all the news about Malaysia about COVID cases, uh, you know, uh, going fifteen thousand, seventeen thousand uh, a day and you see that the, the, the politics in Malaysia is not stable. You, of course, have, a, what do you call that? A no confidence or less confidence to make a trigger. Now, you probably wait until border open or that. But I mean, border opening, uh, I don't know whether it's the, the best time. It, it could be it could be an okay time. I don't know. But I, I mean, I just want to say now, uh, as of July, uh, end of July uh, now, right? Uh, this, these units, are still there and it's still a good price we don't know they won't drop further i can say for sure as a developer uh it's very difficult for them to cut prices further even sub sale prices right now auction prices right now are around here and it cannot drop further i mean uh we have seen auction okay they've been asking are there any auction units yes uh there have been auction units but they've all cleared at about 800 plus over thousand and uh, 800 x x thousand right? so that we have not seen auction drop below seven to seven plus four thousand because uh, seven plus thousand, you you go into another category of housing really. So it's it's unlikely that uh, auction will drop below this rate, right? So um so yeah, so eight xx is the is the floor price really for for, for for properties in the story garden. So uh, why does landed property remain popular? Um, uh, and I've spoken about this in my earlier videos, but let me do it again now. So um, Malaysia still has a lot of land, so a lot of locals perceive that. I should buy a landed property because there's a lot of land. No reason for me to stay a condo. Um, but in KL and Penang, actually, it's not so bad. Actually, a lot of KL and Penang people are okay to stay in condo now because uh, KL and Penang uh, have very bad travel time, right? And uh, because of traffic jams and uh, congestion, right? So people are okay to stay in condo as, so that they can get nearer to, to, to work, right? So, uh, and but in JB, this is not so the case because our travel time in JB is still not so bad. Uh, although we have heavy traffic most of the time, maybe Jalan Skudai, uh, Austin, the Austin to town, uh, that stretch is still uh, jammed uh, in, in, in a, lot, a lot of times of the day, 
right? But generally speaking, travel time in, in, in JB is not bad, right? You can get from anywhere to anywhere in an hour. In most cases, right? Uh, it's difficult to go somewhere that takes more than an hour, right? So because of that, people still prefer to stay landed because anyhow, it doesn't take too far to go to somewhere, right? So I might as well buy a landed property, right? And you see this today where uh, uh, townships are going further and further away, like Senai, Pulai, Pasir Udang, uh, Sri Austin, which is actually, actually quite far in a sense, but people still don't mind to buy there because travel time is not so bad, right? So, uh, that, so that's one thing, right? People still prefer landed because land is still available. Uh, third is of course uh, supply demand in in JB for landed property is 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 better balanced, right? Although high rise is quite oversupplied, but landed uh, is not so oversupplied, right? Because uh, by virtue of landed, you don't you can't build that many landed houses on the same amount of land, so uh, so uh, landed houses supply demand is okay, right? Uh, I know you you may have read some reports saying that landed houses are oversupplied, but actually in Johor, uh, not so much, not so much, okay. Uh, so uh, and on per square foot basis, right? Uh, landed properties are cheaper, right? And uh, again, uh, why I, I I consider many people, I, I recommend many people who are from who are earning in Singapore dollar, whether you're Singaporean or Malaysian working in Singapore. Uh, buying a landed property in GB makes a lot of sense because Singapore landed property is very expensive, right? Landed property in Singapore, we are talking about minimum three million uh, for the smaller ones uh, and uh, four ish million for the bigger sizes, right? To the GCBs, which today are like you know, 20, 30 million, 40 million, 60 million, right? So, uh, landed property is something that I believe over the longer run will retain value. And uh, JB will one day become something like Singapore, something like KL in the sense that. Uh, there's not enough land for landed property anymore and high-rise living will become more common. So, I mean, in a way, one reason why a lot of Singaporeans lost money buying high-rise in JB is because a uh, high-rise living is uh, ahead of its time, right? A lot of locals not ready to stay condo yet. Even if they stay, they only rent, they don't want to buy, right? Because uh, it's a temporary accommodation for them. Longer term, for ownership, they still try to buy uh, landed, right? So, so, uh, high-rise living will have its time of the day when there's more population in JB and travel time uh, increases. So then people will not mind staying in condo. But right now, uh, especially with COVID, right, especially with border closures, closure, right, a lot of people still can stay landed. Travel time is also bad, so they stay landed. So, uh, and so also the other thing, of course, my last point is that if you are Singaporean and you have not experienced living in a landed house before, or you want to try a landed living, I think landed living in, in JB makes a lot of sense. And I'll, I'll talk about that in or maybe I've spoken about it in other videos before. Uh, lifestyle, right? And the reason why one day uh, uh, Iskandar makes no sense. I mean, I'm still a big believer in Iskandar Malaysia. A lot of people have run away from Iskandar, uh, lost confidence in Iskandar. Uh, I'm still a big believer because I'm now in Singapore and I see for Singapore property prices increasing by ever. Singapore is still a fairly congested place, <laughs> right? Because there's a lot of people crammed. It's a high-density country, right? And I think a lot of people appreciate the low density uh, lifestyle in Malaysia, right? A lot of people come and tell me, Ryan, I miss Johor a lot. Yeah, and I know why. I miss Johor too, right? Uh, I've been here a month plus in, in, Sing in Singapore, but I still miss Johor, right? And th uh, there's a lot of things in Malaysia to love, right? And to enjoy. And uh, we all can't wait for the border to be reopened again. So, uh, Astoria Gardens is not the only project that's selling well right now in JP, right? In case you're wondering, is that is Astoria the only selling best selling project? No, there are a lot, right? Like Sunadi Hills, which uh, we are also marketing. Uh, for the non booming units, there's only like two, maybe three units left. It's, it's also a pain to pick <laughs> to pick units. It's a big pain to pick units in Snuggy Hills now. There's, yeah, there's multiple people queuing uh, and re queuing because you can't get the unit that you want. Uh, another project is sold very well, Crest Austin. I mean, a very popular location, so definitely sold out very well. Uh, I think recently or, or soon, the booby lots are going to be converted to non booby for Crest Austin, so we are also looking forward to that. Uh, Pasir Gudang projects like Maryland East, Lion Casa selling well. Uh, I mean, uh, Scientex also doing well with the affordable housing in Pulai's, uh, Pulai, uh, Pulai's Kulai area. Uh, of course, some bigger cluster projects like Grand Mary and the Woodlands houses, although in a, a price at the highest, slightly slightly higher price point, but also selling well because, uh, you know, I mean, higher price point, but as long as you get what you want, better quality, better location, people are willing to pay, right? So there is a what I call local pricing, which after so many years in Johor, I think I get we, we get a better hang of what is the local pricing now and what's the foreigner pricing now. And whenever foreigner projects of that quality drop into the local pricing range, we see that they are stepped up pretty quickly, like what happened in uh, Story Gardens. Okay, so 
this is one thing to show you, right? Uh, recently in May, uh, May this year, right? A couple of months back, uh, Scientex, which is a developer, bought 900 acres, right? In case you don't know where this is, right? Because you may not know. And this is basically this big area down here. You can see it's Austin Heights, right? A very popular area. Uh, Dato On, Austin Heights. A lot of people, a lot of people know. I've heard of Austin and Dato On, right? Uh, this is a popular area, right? And you notice that, in fact, Austin and Dato On today are super mature areas, right? And in fact, these areas like Sutik Inda, which uh, like three to five years ago was considered very ulu, right? Very far away, have now become mature. And now developers are buying land even up north, right? You can see all these are still plantation area, right? And some developers have convert buying all this land to convert all these plantation into development areas because basically uh, there's no more land and they have to move up north, right? So it's it's a it's a typical suburban sprawl that you see in many major cities, right? Uh, JB is undergoing it, right? Uh, JB still has land, right? So JB is undergoing this process where the suburban sprawl is moving north, okay? So uh, that's fine, right? It's okay. That's how cities grow. Right, and when as you move up north and travel time become further and further, that's where high rise living in the town, right? Uh, places like Danga Bay, Putri Harbor, all this high rise living will become more and more acceptable because nobody wants to travel so far to, to get home, right? So that's where condos will get better as well. So it's good news for Malaysia, uh, Johor real estate overall, right? And you see this, like, as I mentioned, in Penang and KL, right? It will happen in Johor soon, right? So, um, what represents a good landed property buy, right? So uh, let me talk about Story Gardens again. So Story Gardens uh, is our recommended property in uh, because this video we do in YouTube, we, we a lot of the viewers I notice are from Singapore, right? And uh, if people in Singapore ask me, so what's a good landed buy? I still recommend Story Gardens. Uh, ten months later, we all, because we still have some units left, right? Uh, so uh, Story Gardens, uh, as you can see, is in Putri Harbour, right? Uh, pretty near all the major plus points of. Uh, this area, which is like the mall of Medini, uh, two schools, Marlboro College and Raffles American School just on top, right? So a lot of people stay here to go, a lot of foreigners and Singaporeans are starting to stay around this area to send to the top schools here, right? Uh, there's some universities, of course, there's uh, Medini and uh, things like the, uh, the Legoland and uh, what do you call it? The Glen Eagles Hospital, right? So location is super prime, right? Uh, Putri, uh, Astoria Gardens is one of two landed projects with a Putri Harbour address, right? The Putri Harbour address is pretty prestigious. So, uh, yeah, so one, only one of two landed projects in, uh, in Putri Harbour and uh, it's the more affordable one. <laughs> so, but you get the Putri Harbour address and um, freehold, right? Uh, freehold property, freehold landed property, strata title, right? Uh, all international lots, there are no booming lots here. So you don't have to worry about things like booming quota and booming prices and stuff like that. So uh, everything's international, get the guarded, uh, only 350 units total and uh, size, lot sizes here are pretty big, right? We're talking about um, super link houses, right? Uh, they're not the small, small terrace houses. So when we say small, we're talking about 20, 70, you know, 1865, these are the smaller sizes, right? But uh, terrace houses in Esquire Gardens are the bigger sizes, right? And these are high spec buildings, right? Uh, where the developer has provided stuff like uh, uh, engineered timber flooring, uh, air con, Inverter aircon, not just aircon, inverter aircon, solar water heater, uh, wireless solar. The building specs are pretty high, right? They are not done with cheap uh, materials, right? So, uh, yeah, so, so Astoria Gardens is on the higher end in terms of terrace houses, right? In fact, the, the specs here are very similar to what is normally given for semi detached uh, and above houses in Johor, right? So, uh, as I mentioned here, prices are from 900,000 ringgit onwards, right? And, and, and at this price, it becomes very affordable to the local buyers, especially those upgraders, uh, business owners, high income, uh, looking to get a quality uh, landed house, right? So, um, and, and, and 900,000 is the range, right? Because if your budget is lower, like 6XX to 8XX, right? Then they're going to buy something more uh, mass market, right? Which is like Sonadi Hills or an older, older Horizon Hills Terrace, right? Even the newer Horizon Hill Terraces are 800 plus thousand in the world. So the older Horizon Hills, you can still get 6XX, 7XX, but or you are talking about other uh, local terrace houses, which are Sunadi, uh, Bukit Indah terrace houses are uh, around 6XX, uh, thousand thing. So foreigners can buy over a million, right? Uh, but even as Sunadi, uh, even as Tuari at 900 plus thousand, uh, prices can be adjusted so that foreigners can buy, right? So uh, the, the important thing when choosing uh, a lender property now is of course to understand the local price and the, and the foreign price. And try to get a good balance where uh, locals uh, to be safer locals can buy a property as well so if you can buy a store at this price at least you are very sure that for uh, locals can buy 
uh, this property from you in the future, right? So uh, prices in Story now are historical low, right? Uh, if you go back to the Story's original launch, right, in 2012, uh, they were all above a million, right? 1.2, 1.5 million, right? Uh, we met many owners who were quite disappointed that prices have dropped so bad. Uh, it's unfortunate for them, right? But uh, now prices are priced uh, correctly, right? A lot of the buyers now are definitely in the money, right? And I think pretty safe for the future, right? Uh, high quality neighborhood, uh, a lot of Koreans, a lot of Singaporeans, people who are buying this area are pretty, uh, in Singapore, we call high SES, right? So high, high social status, uh, higher social status people, right? So it's a good, it's a good quality neighborhood, right? Uh, and you won't run into any refresh in this area. Uh, high specs property, as I mentioned earlier, uh, security, a lot of gardens. I think you can see a lot of kids running around in the evenings, uh, cycling around. It's, it's, a, it's a great place to uh, raise children, right? Um, of course, when you are part of Putri Harbour, you become part of the uh, Putri Harbour and Iskanda Putri master plan. Uh, UEM is the master developer for this area. And uh, although UEM has a pretty mixed track record for, <laughs> for, for master development, right? I, they are not the best, I mean, but uh, as a as a government link developer, right? Uh, definitely, there's a lot of things they need to put in this area, right? So you you from this slide you can see that a story is not just limited to these 350 units. There are many future phases that go all the way into the sea, right? Of course, this has to be planned out properly, as in they don't overbuild, right? And timing is important, right? But you can see that uh, you are part of many of these plus points that are what we, the benefits of staying in this area, right? You can see like Marlboro College, Raffles American School, Gunnigal's Hospital, Kota Iskandar, which is to the, the government office complex where the Chief Minister of Johor is based, right? All the high-end stuff in Putri Harbour itself, like the, the marinas and ferry terminal, right? all the hotels, right? Uh, Highwood Studios, okay, Highwood Studios no longer here, but there's a, there's, a, there's a film studio still here, Legoland and, and the second link to Singapore. So, uh, if if Iskanda goes through a, uh, when Iskanda goes through its new next phase of growth, which it will, just a matter of time, uh, you will see a lot of stuff happening here uh, as well. So and you'll be very near and the beneficiary of all this, right? So uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, these are all the the big stuff that's going on in in nearby uh, right now, right? And uh, of course, the big thing for Johor is, is that we have signed the uh, rapid transit agreement last year, right? So if if you all remember July last year. Oh, which is actually almost, yeah, last year, right? Nam last year. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Prime Ministers of Malaysia and Singapore have signed this agreement to continue construction of the rapid transit MRT between Singapore uh, Woodlands to the JB Town Centre. And actually both sides, both governments have actually issued construction works, right? Uh, Singapore has had released uh, two contracts, I think, one to a Korean company, one to a Chinese company for construction of the MRT station. And uh, Malaysia has also done a lot of land acquisition and some land clearance works as well, uh, contracts given. So we, we know that this thing will be built by 2026. And um, I think by then COVID will be over or more accepted. And definitely uh, borders will be reopened by then. And we can definitely see a lot of benefit, uh, a lot of uh, going up to a lot of investments and uh, people going back to JD, right? So I think especially when you reduce travel time between Singapore and JD, it's a very important thing. Uh, I mean, I talk about this a lot in my other videos. So if you want to find out more, uh, do watch my other videos about the RTS, right? I, I try not to talk about it here too much. Okay, so uh, Singapore is land scarce. So I always believe that uh, at some point, once you reduce travel time between Singapore and JD, right, there's a lot of spillover into Iskandar and, and Johor Bahru in general, right? But do watch my other videos about this if you want to find out more. Okay, so uh, it will be a major boost uh, to this kind of major economically and the competition in uh, 2026 for the RTS. Okay, for the RTS. So um, another question that I tend to get a lot is uh, Malaysia right now is in a bad state. Right? Are you sure it's safe to buy? I mean, uh, as I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, right? You buy when there's blood on the streets, right? <laughs> and we are pretty close or already ongoing through the blood on the streets uh, today, right? So uh, will prices fall further? Now, uh, you must understand that from a developer perspective, right, if they drop prices further, it's already be below, in a way, it's below what you call break-even point. Right? And, uh, and as a developer for Astoria Gardens, they've already sold over 100 units. So actually, there's no real reason to drop further, right? They, they've already cleared majority of what they want to clear, right? Uh, I'm just telling people that there's still units left, right? And, 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 and market is moving, right? In, in the sense that for this type of properties, people are still buying. So you don't want to miss out, come to me right next year and then say, oh, this is, oh no more already, or no much choice. And then you feel like, ah, like you missed the boat, right? Um, 
I mean, okay, I don't know whether this video will convince you or not. You, it may still not convince you because I know people don't like to buy property without seeing it, not right? But I mean, okay, I, I must at least try and tell you. <laughs> and, and people say, hey, I don't say I never warn you. I did tell you, right? So uh, that uh, there is a good deal going on, right? Um, yeah, so will prices fall further? It's very difficult, right? In, in many cases, a lot of developers today, due to higher construction costs, because of COVID also in part, right? And, uh, and inflation in general, right? It's difficult to build the same house today for higher. So I think a lot in many cases, and I mentioned this to some close friends and other people who bought property also, that in many ways, I think Iskandar Malaysia will be saved by virtue of inflation because uh, inflation will push uh, prices up, asset prices up in the future, right? Because uh, since COVID, right, the M2 money supply in the world has uh, about doubled, right? And double, there's a lot of money chasing too few assets. Of course, that money will go to the stock market first, and that's why you see things like share market going up a lot and Bitcoin prices going up very high. But at, at some point, I think one, uh, once border open, it will also flow into real estate. Uh, of course, it flows into Singapore real estate because Singapore real estate is very accessible to the rich, right? And the rich are usually the first people to get like money, right? But you also go to Johor at some point. Uh, once borders reopen, because uh, the rich people can't access uh, Johor at this stage because of the border closure, right? So, uh, but prices are hard to fall further because by virtue of inflation, right? No developer will build house if they lose money based on construction price. So, in, in the sense, real estate is is always a good buy because you, inflation protect you from this in the future, right? So, although Malaysia COVID cases are high, uh, but so is vaccination rates. I think vaccination rates in Malaysia are at an all time high now. And the uh, reason being is because the government has realized that all governments have realized now the, the faster you invest in, the faster you get out of the problem. Uh, Malaysia was slow to realize it, or maybe uh, as the, not easy to get vaccine supply, right? Uh, I think many countries, many poorer countries in the world uh, face this problem. I think there was a lot of vaccine hoarding in the US and in Europe, right? But now some of these supplies are getting released and uh, Malaysia is getting vaccinated faster. And we hope to see is coming out as soon as possible, right? So if you know vaccination rates are increasing, and I think Malaysia vaccination rate now is close to 30-40%, right? Uh, once we hit 60 and above, right, which will probably be about three months time, right, then uh, we, there will be a lot of planning towards year end about how to reopen uh, for the skin, okay? So, so yeah, so if you if you like what I, I spoke about Story Gardens, right, or you've seen my earlier videos or have some idea about Story Gardens, and then you will ask me, so uh, I like Story Gardens, what are my choices? So um, let's go back to this chart, right, as of uh, yesterday, right, 30th of July. So what is a good buy? Okay, so to me, a uh, good buy, I have, I have categorized in these three uh, units, right? So uh, if you need something at the cheapest absolute unit, there is a lot 143, which is basically around 900,000. This is the cheapest unit left. I show you where lot 143 is. It's not facing uh, type A1. Not a bad unit. I've actually physically been to this unit before. It's not so bad. Your neighbors are pretty much occupied. You're not staying in a ghost, ghost town or whatever. There's a lot of people staying along the street. So 143 is the uh, cheapest actually, although it's a smaller size here. Uh, but actually, if you want something pretty affordable, I think Lot 143 is not a bad unit. And actually, uh, I would stay in Lot 143 uh, uh, in, in this unit, right? So it's, it's a good unit, right? Uh, about 900k, uh, type A1. If you want south-facing, you need some, uh, you know, in Chinese, we always say south-facing houses are generally the best houses to stay. Uh, and uh, I would recommend Lot 304, which is over here. Okay. Uh, and why I say Lot 304 also is because if you notice, this is the garden spine, right? Where there's a very nice garden cycling track area in the middle and it's pretty safe-ish. And then 304, it come out at the end of the road, right? So you can send your kids or you yourself can go into this garden spine and walk up and down. So I think as we have seen many people try to buy or enjoy buying nearer to this garden spine because they find that this is a very uh, pleasant place to be, like quiet and pleasant and very green. So Lot 304 is my recommended south-facing, right? If you want to be uh, south-facing and also part of the garden spine, long-term uh, south houses are always very nice. Uh, and uh, if you need a corner, I will recommend uh, corner lot, uh, if you want the land, right, maybe for pets, or if you want to consider extension, right, uh, then lot one is my recommended unit, okay, because again, there is a very nice garden patch on the left, right, and uh, lot one uh, faces a pretty quiet area also. Uh, generally, we've been trying to avoid units too near the main road here and here, right, if you notice this Jalan N5-5 and Jalan B1, these are pretty 
uh, I mean, they are considered main roads, uh, although traffic not very high. So uh, you will notice that a lot of the buyers try to avoid these two roads. Uh, right? But if you want the best units, uh, these are the three best units I recommend to you right now. Okay. So uh, floor plans. So I go through quickly the floor plans with you. Uh, of course, I realized I never talked about it earlier. So type A1, A2 are actually quite similar. The big plus is they have an air well. You can see this yellow color area here, right? It's a void area with a lot of natural light, right? So there's a light from the seat, from the rooftop, not rooftop, but from the, from the roof, like, open roof, right? So you can get a lot of natural light. Some people put water, some people seal it up and make it into like the out internal outdoor area, right? Up to you, you can. Uh, put plants right you can grow tree some some people have seen people put a tree inside here also you can you can <laughs> right uh because this design is pretty unique you can't really get it in uh, malaysia it's quite rare to have an air well right so but uh type a1 type a2 have an air well they're pretty similar actually actually they're pretty similar just small size differences that you may not really really uh notice uh, right but uh, uh yeah and, uh, and the typical you need the arrows on the left on the right uh, a1 a2 the arrow location is a bit different right but but the arrow is a pretty nice thing to have and i see a lot of people get very creative uh with the arrow right uh, upstairs we have three bedrooms right and you have one bedroom downstairs dry and wet kitchen okay dry and wet kitchen three bedrooms upstairs and of course upstairs also enjoy the the void uh, right so there's a lot of natural light in the unit which is pretty nice and uh yeah and a pretty large master bedroom for both layout plans right and you will notice that the master bedroom also comes with its own walk-in wardrobe design area so you can do a pretty good walk-in wardrobe especially for the a2 okay so uh the other two types are the b and the c actually the c has been very popular because the c is the, is although it's bigger right it's a 30 by 80 terrace house which is again uh very rare 30 by 80 terraces are very rare and you got a big void here so actually this unit has been very high demand that's why we, we pretty much consider almost sold out this type C, right? Uh with a big courtyard. Again, dry wet kitchen. Four and uh type C has four bedrooms upstairs. One, two, three, four. Four bedrooms are not three. So you actually have five bedrooms in this house. Right? Five plus one bedroom. So four bedrooms upstairs, right? And uh still a bedroom downstairs. Right. So type C has been very popular again because of the courtyard aerial concept. Right. Type B is more your typical Malaysian house. They don't have an airwell, so type B doesn't have airwell. So if you prefer this more traditional layout without an airwell, uh, it's type B. But again, three bedrooms upstairs, one bedroom downstairs. So type B has uh, is the traditional layout. But you get so-called more space. Uh, but some people feel the airwell is a bit of wasted space, but depends. I mean, it's uh, up to you, right? And uh, yeah, so that's my analysis of Astori right now. So if you're ready to buy, I mean, uh, it's a good time to look for deals. You may not pull the trigger immediately. I understand, right? Uh, you may have some fear that oh, Malaysia will go into the worst state than this right now. But <laughs> Malaysia has a history of uh, going to the cliff, looking over the cliff, and then walking back. So I think it's not as bad as it looks. I always equate Malaysia situation now to like Indonesia in 1997 after Suharto fell, right? I don't know if you if you guys are good at politics or read a lot of political news, you will know what it means. Uh, when when Suharto fell in 1997. Uh, Indonesia went went into a, a few years, multiple presidents, multiple governments where they try to sort themselves out. And now they have Jokowi and they're doing pretty well. So I think uh, it's the same thing going on in Malaysia. We had Barisan National here for a long, long period and 50 over years. So now um, Barisan National is over. But I mean, and Malaysians and the Malaysian political parties are trying to decide what is the new equilibrium. And I think that is good for Malaysia, right? Uh, we as a society advance in the future. Of how we should be so and i think it's a uh, we all as investors it's important to be contrarian right some of the mistakes we make typically are that we are not contrarian enough we tend to follow the herd so even myself right i mean i consider myself a pretty seasoned investor right uh but yeah my mistakes in 2013 was that i we, we follow the herd too much right and, and, as, a, and as a result uh, you, you cannot buy when everything sounds too good, right? Normally, if that's the case, then you're buying at the top, right? So similarly, you need to buy when things are pretty bad or no one has heard about it, right? Like, you know, like Bitcoin, right? No, when you, who makes the most money from Bitcoin? Those who bought the earliest, right? When nobody believed in Bitcoin. So uh, you make the biggest money because you were contrarian. So similarly here in Skanda, I think, uh, and I'm very thankful that I have the ability to still remain invested and committed to this market right is that um uh 
you buy at the lowest, right? In fact, right now we are, I'm trying to consolidate my own finances, right? Because I have a number of <laughs> not so good investments also, which I need to consolidate. So I, if I can do everything well, we are also looking to buy as well. And we are, we we still have a lot of people inquiring about this kind of the reason why I still do all these videos, uh, in YouTube and recently my Instagram, my Facebook is because. Uh, I still get a lot of queries, so I, I'm, I'm still very happy that Skanda still has demand. Although it's not like the hyped up period of uh, eight, nine years ago, but at least uh, there's a lot of genuine uh, opportunistic buying going on right now. And I think that if you're watching this video, and uh, you, you should take your time to look at good deals right now and try to buy ideally before Bonner reopen, right? So uh, thank you very much for watching my video. If you do like what I have shared today, please uh, like uh, my YouTube, uh, share or subscribe. Uh, and uh, please leave a comment if you have any questions. I will get back to you uh, on YouTube quite immediately. Or if you feel like you have any queries about Scandal Malaysia, uh, whether you're a buyer or a seller or your owner, uh, feel free to contact me at the phone numbers below and uh, or email me. And uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my video. <laughs> thank you.